This is Trax in Google Earth. There are a few key features that will assist you in navigating and utilizing Trax simply. In the upper right hand side of the map, you will see your navigation tools. These tools include zooming in and out, street view, pan left, right, up and down, and tilt and rotate. At the top of the navigation tools, you will see a small N as in north. You can click on the N at any time to reposition the map. On the left hand side of your map is your sidebar. The sidebar contains three separate tools. The first tool is your search pane. You can search any address, place, name, or latitude and longitude coordinate using the search box. In the middle is your places pane. Tracks will automatically be loaded into your temporary places. What this means is upon exiting Google Earth, it will not be saved. To save it, simply drag it into the My Places folder. At the bottom is the Layers pane. To make Google Earth run faster on your computer, uncheck all of the boxes under the Layers pane with the exceptions of Borders and Labels and Rows. Another feature to keep you sane is found under the Tools tab at the top left corner of the screen. By clicking on Tools, you will find the Options tab. Click on Options and then Navigation. Google Earth defaults to automatically tilt and enter ground level view. This can be frustrating while zooming in and out. We recommend you choose Do Not Automatically Tilt While Zooming. Click Apply and then OK. Time is controlled using the Time Slide Bar. The Time Slide Bar is found at the upper left corner of the map. When call detail records are imported into Google Earth, they are chronologically sequenced and controlled by the Time Slide Bar. You will find a wrench icon at the upper right hand corner of the time slide bar. Click on the wrench to open the date and time options. You can dial up a particular time frame in this window. You can also control what time zone is displayed. Trax runs on UTC. Check the UTC option to have the time zone of the call detail records displayed. At the bottom of the options box, you can control the animation speed. We recommend you set this to the slowest setting. We also recommend you check the loop animation box. Then click OK. When you open a Trax KMZ file, all of the calls with the tower information are shown on the map. In the time slider bar, you have the main pointer and the range bar. When they are maxed out, the main pointer will be on the right hand side and the range bar will be on the left. By collapsing the range bar toward the main pointer, you can reduce the amount of time displayed. By adjusting the main pointer, you can search through the time slider bar for a particular time and date. To get a more detailed view of a specific time, you can use the zoom in and zoom out feature. Once you have identified a specific time you want to look at in more detail, click on the zoom in feature to zoom in on the timeline. Once you zoom in and move the range bar towards the main pointer, you will find the zoom in feature appears again. By clicking to zoom in, you have the ability to run the records at whatever speed you desire, all the way up to real time. To return to the original view, zoom out. To automate the records, simply use the play feature on the slide bar. The play button is next to the zoom in feature. By clicking play, the call detail records will be displayed in chronological order. Because we have checked the loop box, the timeline will continue to run uninterrupted. You can pause at any time by clicking the play pause button. Notice as the tower for each call is displayed, an associated number is also displayed with that tower. The number displayed is the row number from the call detail records. For example, row number 53 in your call detail records will have the number 53 displayed next to the tower. This format makes it easier to view calls in chronological order. It also makes it easier to visualize direction, call order, and identify when a phone is stationary. You will notice track sector overlays are one of a kind. We actually map the RF footprint that a cell tower antenna creates. ZX has currently mapped over 2 million individual sectors throughout the United States. Our tower database is the most accurate database available. This allows for a mapping program that accounts for cell identification, coverage areas, and overlaps. On the screen, there is a series of calls between two towers. Given the time frame, the phone is stationary during these calls. Because the phone is between two towers, it utilizes both towers for multiple calls. Trax accounts for this by using a heat map formula, which highlights the area the device is most likely located. Also unique to Trax, individual call information is displayed in balloons on the map. 
By clicking on the tower icon, a call information balloon is displayed. In the balloon, you can find the date and time of the call, incoming and outgoing numbers, duration, and the tower information. We have linked our phone lookup tool to the numbers displayed in the balloon. By simply clicking Tracks Lookup, the phone number is ran through our carrier lookup tool. This tool identifies the carrier regardless of porting and provides the carrier legal contact number. Subscriber information will also be displayed when available. Track subscribers will have access to immediately create exigent request forms, search warrants, and preservation letters customized for the specific carrier and the user's agency. Click back to Google Earth to return to the map. You will notice when we clicked on Tower 115, it was also indexed on the Places pane. Each call line is searchable. At the bottom of the Places pane, you will find a search box that allows you to search by line activity. For example, if you want to display call number 87, simply type it in the search box. This will highlight call 87. Then double click on that number. This tutorial is a brief overview for the use of tracks. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at 844-367-9389 or 844-4ZX.